Hey, Money.net Live, Jeremy Newsom, Real Life Traders. How are you, man? Doing great, Money.net. Thanks for letting me be here. Steve, I got a question. What do you, what do, you do for your trader psychology? How do you stay so cool, calm, and collected all the time? Well, um, I have a wife who beats me half to death if I get a, <laughs> a dog that's not very nice. I'm just kidding. Uh, long story short, you know, when you've done it for 32 years, that's the first thing you need to learn is, as a trader is to just get rid of the emotion it just take it all out of there i know that there are people who say that emotion's good you got to understand it but you know what um there are times when i just have to walk away i get all that right but the truth of the matter is it's just it's just numbers in a head right um i know it affects you overall personal but if you split out the two things for example you have a wealth generating machine which is which is your long-term portfolio and then you have a short-term portfolio which is your trading portfolio if you're messing with both of those and they're mixing them that's a problem um the other thing i do is if a position bothers you it's one of my one of my rules um then you're too big. So I try to lower, I try to lower that stress, right? So don't put the stress on yourself, right? It doesn't take a lot. We're all trying to YOLO into something and it just doesn't work. You can't stay in the game long term if you're YOLOing into everything. That's a really good piece of advice. So if you have a position that's stressing you out, trim it. Yeah. 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 Because you shouldn't. Like if like if you buy one share, are you gonna be really upset about it? Or if you right. buy 10,000 shares, you're going to be upset about it. And if the answer is yes, figure out somewhere in that middle to kind of operate where you can be more comfortable. And it Love messes that. with your psychology when it comes to every tick up on that 10,000 share position, right? You're like, should I get out now? Should I get out now? And it messes with your thesis of why you got in the first place. So if you if you want to put 10,000 shares into a great, then I also tell you to leverage in, right? You know, you want to walk into that. Maybe you just do... Uh, 1,000 shares now and another 1,000 shares later until you feel like you're in the right position until it, it feels comfortable, right? Um, if it doesn't feel comfortable, don't be in the position. Don't don't be as hard as you're in. That's why I'm not worried about some of my positions I have right now. I'm, I'm not worried about them because I can add to them. That's what bother, That's what keeps me from going crazy in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. So do you ever play uh, both positions? Like, do you ever hedge, have some long, have some short? What does that look like? Yeah, I mean, obviously, if I have a big position, say a tech stock, then I will hedge it against it by using Q puts, right? If especially if it's a big position, um, and I know that maybe it's like Apple, right? And it's a you know it's not going to move as much, but if it's if it's a stock that's really high tech and it's really moving and it's you know it may not go your way, say a good example of that would be Teladoc. My my thesis on Teladoc is that they're going to get bought out, right? This is a company that's got a quality product. The stock was way high. It's way low now. It could go lower. I'm okay with that. But I don't have a huge position on So I'm not worried about it, right? If it falls, great. If it goes up, great. Uh, if it falls, I'll buy more. If it goes up, I'll take a profit. And so that's why I'm not worried about it, right? I don't care if Kathy Woods is in it or not. So, um, yeah. What about Smart, you? Man. What, what do you? I mean, obviously, you're, you're a personality. You, you, I don't think, do you stress about anything in life? <laughs> oh, yeah, man, for sure. Uh, especially long lines. That's that's like my go-to stress. Long What's lines. a long line, bro? I don't believe in long lines. Just skip it right around. You're, you're you're Jeremy Newsom. True, true, and that that's been happening more recently, which is cool. Uh, fun fact: like if anyone ever goes to Universal Studios, you should absolutely pay for the VIP tickets. Absolutely. That, yes. Oh my gosh, that was so cool, man! That was the best thing ever. And you, you know, that's exactly right, Jeremy. That's why we trade, right? To have a lifestyle that we wouldn't have had had we had just stuck ourselves into a long-term job, right? It's great right. to have jobs. It's great to have employment. And I think that's important. And I think we all should do that, right? I think we, I think we should all be double dipping, right? We should all have a job and be trading. That's part of life, wealth generating, right? Um, but as your wealth generator gets bigger than your job, then you need to think about that. That's when you start to say, okay, I can be a full-time trader, right? Uh, but, but it all allows us to have a better home, a better car, a better lifestyle, um, you know, all the fun things that we, we expect the American dream to be about and there's only one way to do that and that's it's the biggest wealth generator in the world and that is the stock market and the and equities a lot of times it is man it's having the belief that it's available that it's available for anyone it's available to anyone and just sometimes sitting down and seeing how much money goes in and out of the markets on a day and the way i like to do that is just really easy nothing crazy but i'll sit down i'll look at the average volume of a stock i'll multiply it by the shares the share price of the day 
and see how many billions of dollars changed hands on that one stock, on that one market, on that one random day and allow me to kind of sit into abundance. Cause that's one of the things that I do. Like when I feel scared or I feel stressed or I have scarcity or whatever, uh, I, I do. I try to get myself into an abundant mindset just to realize how much is out there because you're, when you find your mission, you'll find your millions. And it's, a, it's about knowing why you're doing what you're doing and knowing that the, the dream and the goal is going to allow you to be pulled. So it's better to be pulled by your dreams than pushed by your problems. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that on my wall, I think, somewhere. <laughs> you know, it's uh, when we see this market when it's supposedly a slow time august um you know the, the volume should be lower i guess tomorrow and then you see these mean stocks running like crazy you gotta you gotta wonder just just what is really going on in the in these people's heads that are they think that best buy is going to and bed, bed bath and beyond is going to go to five thousand dollars a share i mean i saw the number of eighty dollar calls on was blowing my mind i mean the stock's not is stocks worth about two or three dollars and here we are at 18, even with the Ryan Cohen sell-off. Um, why, why, what is going on? Why, why is this such a phenomenon right now? I can't figure it out. I like, I, I'm excited about it. I love the money run, but I don't understand it. And when I don't understand something, I usually go, okay, you know what? I'm backing off. I'm with you, man. I, I think that that's, uh, that's, that's exactly where I'm at right now. I mean, you're getting some moves in AMC, right? You're getting some moves in GameStop. It got halted the other day. Yeah, Best Buy. Um, ASTS is doing some really, really interesting things. Rocket Lab. So I'm keeping an eye on Virgin Galactic because you've had a lot of uh, a, a lot of random low float stocks that haven't that they have moved strong, and, and Virgin hasn't. Um, it, it wasn't. I wouldn't call it a meme stock necessarily, but it's definitely in that rocket propulsion traveling space similar to ASTS and Rocket Lab. But I don't know, man. I'm really not sure. I'm maybe maybe the people are just tired of the big names and they're still kind of pushing something. Maybe it's Wall Street bets, but I'm with you. This one I did not see. I did not know it was going to happen. I didn't catch any of it. And I'm kind of shying away from it right now, which is okay. I mean, there's that's what's crazy is there's so many moves all the time that you're going to miss. And you just celebrate everyone who did catch it and you congratulate them and uh, you go find your thing. I mean, the kid made what 110 million dollars uh, yoloing into uh, some crazy stock, uh, Bed Bath and Beyond, the other day. I mean, good for him. I, 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 I'm very proud of him. But uh, so as cool. said, I hope he took his profit. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Okay. So the, the, unfortunately, this gets go to the bad stuff. Um, Jesse Jolly, well, Jesse Jolly, just on one of our groups said, uh, no, call it a meme stock, SPCE. The apes hold deep on that one. So um, as everybody knows, I own SPCE. I have a, a thesis on it, but I don't own very much of it anymore. I owned a lot of it back in the 20s, so I understand. Um, but the theme that's been hearing lately is, unfortunately, is food shortages, that um, the Midwest has not been getting a lot of rain, um, that there's a good, very possibility that we're going to have some nastiness come, um, say, September, October, when the corn doesn't come out of the field. Um, sh food shortages is not something we're used to, uh, Jeremy. Uh, how are we going to handle this? Interesting you mentioned that. Um, the, the baby formula shortage was a real problem. Yes, and it was. That, that absolutely impacted, uh, impacted the country and, and, and people's emotions. And it was, it was a struggle for a lot of individuals. The food shortage is going to, share some, is going to show some, some big gaping holes in the supply chain system with America and what we're really focusing on and what we're trying to do, right? I mean, because there's, there's never going to be an alcohol shortage or a tobacco shortage or a cigarette shortage. Oh. So why are, we having, why are we having food shortages and baby formula shortages? Right. So, I, I mean, I think that the negativity here will open the eyes to the opportunity that is available for people to go in and fix this problem, whatever it is. And there's there's so many different ways to to do that. But, yeah, man, this, this is going to be some opportunities for entrepreneurs to come in here and eat, maybe using blockchain, maybe using different growing mechanisms or methods, maybe using different locations, um, different water sources. But it's going to be something that some people can go out there and fix. 
and make a lot of money doing so. You know, it's interesting when we saw the shortages in oil and gas, uh, we kind of find out the companies that were making the money, not the uh, other way around, right? Um, the oil companies were taking advantage of it and the margins exploded. So are we going to see margins exploding in the, those kind of grain companies and, and potash companies we've been talking about? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that would that would make the most sense. And if <clears throat> very similar to your the if your thesis, if you take that thesis, if you take that approach, and it doesn't start working, right? Cut bait and flip, or because it could go very quickly the other direction. But it's one right. of those situations where a good straddle, maybe a long term strangle. Um, yeah, this could be a good spot to start going. All right, well, hey, you heard it here first with a big beat. That's why you. Uh, that's why you be a register. You should be registering through money.net. But having that information and sitting down and thinking about it, right? Think and grow rich. That's the name of the book. Getting an idea of what could impact and how. That's exactly what you're doing and what we're doing, man. That's that's amazing. All right. What else you got going on? Uh, the bourbon thing you had going on for a while. What you got going on? You always got something, man. Yeah. Well, so I just I just did another race for the bourbon. Um, another two and a half million. We were buying some uh, some bourbon with Castle and Key. It's another distillery out of Kentucky. Uh, so that one got fully funded as of yesterday. Um, next thing, man, I mean, I'm just looking for, just looking for other deals. So my, my, my email inbox and text message inbox is open. I know you sent me something, so I'm looking at that later today. But there, there's always opportunities out there. And so the, the big goal is to just go find them because a lot of individuals will be upset that they can't participate in all the opportunities that are available because they don't have enough money. But remember, there's always enough money. It doesn't have to be yours. So right. if you don't have it, go source it, right? Other people's money, OPM, can be just as beneficial because you can still own pieces of deals. You give your friends, connections, networks, and family members uh, access to, to good returns and all that kind of good stuff. So there's, there's all these things that are available. I love it. I love it. All right, Jeremy, we'll see you right back here next week, man. Good man. See you, bro.